Hey, welcome to tip of the day or tip of the week. Sorry, this is the uh, recovering the uh, root password um, tip of the week. Now, um, obviously, if you are going to do system administration, which is what they test on the RHCSA exam, for really almost all of these tasks, it's going to require that you have an administrative level or root access to the system. Okay, so if the root password, for example, is forgotten, or if the root password, for example, is unknown, we need to know how to go through the process of uh, recovering the root password. And this has changed a little bit uh, with uh, with version 7, so let me go ahead and uh, run through a uh, couple examples here and just kind of show you how, uh, how this should be done. If, if Once you know the procedure, it's pretty straightforward, but um, if you don't know the procedure, then it may not, it's, well, what I'll say is that it's different than what we may have been used to. Uh, with uh, System 5 and init-based systems when we're using uh, System D. So, first thing here, let me go ahead and uh, get myself logged into this uh, box. And if the root password mm -hmm. is uh, unknown, uh, then I would have to uh, restart my system. Now, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, <laughs> cheat here, but there are different ways that we could um, restart the, uh, the system uh, if you have console access. Um, and maybe I'll show you that. So if you're at a, uh, uh, at a console, then you should just be able to pass a, a Control-Alt-Delete and that should restart the system. All right, <clears throat> so now my system's coming up on boot. There's a variety of different ways. I usually just use the down arrow to stop the time, uh, stop the timer on the boot sequence, but um, you could also just hit your space bar to stop that. And you'll see down here, um, there's some notes down there. Um, press E to edit the selected item, or C for a command prompt. So we're gonna go ahead and do the, uh, the edit option here. So I'm gonna go ahead and press E. Okay. And the line that you're looking for here is the line that begins with Linux 16. Okay. Uh, from that line, just go ahead and press your end key, E-N-D, uh, and then append to the end of that line, rd.break. This is going to interrupt the boot process in a pretty pretty early stage. Okay. So you'll see down there on the bottom there that says press Control x to start. So to boot after you've made your change, go ahead and press Control x all right, so a couple things are going to be, uh, because we're interrupting the boot process in such an early phase, what we're going to, what we'll find here is that the, the actual root of the system uh, is actually at this phase mounted under uh, sysroot, and it is currently mounted read-only. Okay? And so notice I was not prompted for a password here, which if you try to go into uh, rescue or emergency mode, you would be prompted for the root password. So if your process is trying to recover the root password, that wouldn't be a great place to go. But see, it just brings me here to a uh, to a shell. Okay. And you'll see here if I do an ls on sysroot, you'll see there's the root of my system. Okay. Now, <clears throat> first thing I have to do is I have to remount that file system um, as read write. Okay. So we're going to do a mount minus o for options. Okay. And we're going to remount because it's already mounted. Uh, and we're going to remount it read write for sysroot. All right. Now, um, next thing that we want to do is we want to root our system. Okay, so we want to root our system at that sysroot. So I'm going to say change root to um, sysroot. And so you'll see here now that I do an ls of root, Got that same directory structure. I've rooted the system. So from here, we've remounted it, read write. Okay, now we should be able to just say password root. Okay. I'll go ahead and change the password to something silly like password here. Tells me it's a bad password, but it's going to let me change it anyway. So all authentication tokens updated successful. Okay. All right. Now, I'm going to break my system here, okay, and let me show you. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and hit exit, and then I'll go ahead and exit again, 
And you'll see my system starts. Okay. And this looks pretty normal. It's kind of booting along. Okay. And. 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 <laughs> and I have a problem. Okay. So. You know, and this is a problem that you, nece you wouldn't necessarily run into in your environment. A lot of environments, you know, run, you know, SE Linux in permissive mode, okay? But when you're running SE, limit, SE Linux in enforcing mode, I'm going to come over here to the next VM here. Since that one, because I'm working through a web interface, this is not a very recoverable situation for me because of the way I'm accessing the labs through a browser. Uh, if you were local to that machine, obviously, you could just reboot it or you could just reboot and then try again um, but I'm just gonna go to a new VM here and without getting too um, too tied up in things I'm just gonna do an LS minus capital Z here on the FT shadow file okay so we know that the shadow file is where our users passwords are uh, stored you see it has a particular file context there okay shadow underscore T what happened when you go through that procedure that I just went through is that running the password command okay, is going to change the file context of the Etsy shadow file. Okay? And that's why I end up here in this blank screen. Okay? So how do we prevent that? Okay? And you see now, if I look at, I can do my get enforce command, right? And it says that Etsy Linux is enforced. Okay, well, if the whole point I'm here is I don't know the root password, if I just say set enforce zero, it tells me it failed, right? Because I'm just a lowly old student. So I can't change the option here, okay, and turn SC Linux off while I go through the procedure. So I'll show you a couple different ways that you can handle this, okay? Um, let's go ahead and just get this guy. Uh, rebooted so again I'm gonna go out to a virtual console and then from the virtual console I'm just gonna go ahead and say control alt delete that'll get the reboot started turn off my on-screen keyboard here press my spacebar to stop the timer basically everything's gonna start the same way E to edit find the line that begins with Linux 16 press my N key E N D and all right, I'm gonna show you a couple different ways we can do this. So this would be the two-step way. Okay. So I can say enforcing equals zero. Okay, so I'm turning off the enforcement of SC Linux for this particular boot. And then do my RD dot break. Right. So as this hangout doesn't run uh, too excessively long, I'm gonna kinda oh, I gotta do my control X here to boot. I'm going to kind of rip through the resetting of the root password since I've already demoed that once. Okay. But remember, basically, first thing we want to do is we want to mount with the remount and the read write option for sysroot. And then we want to root our system to sysroot. And then we want to say password root, give it a password, I'll give root user a password. All right, so reset the root password, go ahead and say exit, go ahead and say exit, and let's watch the boot. So remember, this, up to this point, worked last time also, right? It got to the boot phase, it started booting, and then sort of right when it was supposed to go into the graphical login manager, it failed. So this time it did not fail, all right? So I should be able to get myself logged back in. Uh, I can test my new root password. So you'll see there was a little SE Linux alert that popped up along the bottom. Okay. Now, <clears throat> so I'll go ahead and say SU and try my new root password, which was just password. Hey, it worked. Got out the ID root. Now, 
this is fine because if I say get in force, I'm in permissive mode because that was that what that enforcing equals zero did. Okay, if I look at the um, the actual configuration file, okay, for Etsy Linux. Oops. You know, you'll see that the default here is enforcing. So if I reboot my system at this point, because I'm not completely fixed yet, I would get back to here, land of nowhere. Okay. So here's what we need to do to finish things off. So if I do an LS minus capital Z on the Etsy shadow file, you'll see that it's now in unlabeled underscore T. Remember before it was shadow underscore T is the context. Okay. You see here, now it's got this unlabeled T context. All right. It's really easy to fix, right? So all I have to do here is we just do a restore con and then Etsy shadow. I'll rerun my ls command and you'll see, okay, that we are fixed. I went from the bad context, I run restore context on it, goes back at this default context, shadow underscore T. Now I'm fixed. All right, so that's the what I call the two-step process, okay? and that requires that you have you know you have more work to do after you've logged back into the system. Okay, now the the one-step process. Let me go ahead and show you that. So I'll just go ahead and reboot my system here. Again, I press the space bar, press E, find the line that ends with Linux 16. That's my end key, E N D. This time, I'm not going to do enforcing equals zero. I'm just going to do an RD dot break. My control X to start booting. All right, now, now we know how to do this, right? So we say mount, options, read, write, remount for sysroot. Now we're going to go ahead and change our root to sysroot. Go ahead and set the root password. And I'll set it back to NH. Well, I shouldn't tell you what my password is. Put it back to what it was. <laughs> All right. Now, before I just did an exit, this time I'm going to create a file. I'm going to create a file at the root of the file system called dot auto relabel. Mm -hmm. If you do this, when the system boots back up, SE Linux is gonna see that file and it's gonna relabel the entire file system. Okay, so that's, this is gonna take more time, but I'm done, okay? Once I enter this command, now I type in exit, okay? Exit, and what you'll see here is we're gonna get a little bit more lag, maybe a lot more lag. Okay, because what we did this time is we took care of everything right there um, at that, you know, that break console. But on the other hand, you'll see that it's just kind of sitting here. Okay. And the reason that it's just kind of sitting here is because we created that file called dot auto relabel. And so what that's forcing the system to do is to relabel every file, right? There's only one file that really needs to be relabeled, right? Um, and that's the Etsy shadow file. And that can be relabeled with, um, you know, with the restore con. Now, on the other hand, you better make sure that you do the enforcing equals zero, <laughs> or else you're going to get over here to nowhere land. Okay. So those are sort of the two options. You know, you can do it as a two-step process or a single-step process. But keep in mind that we have to, you know, we have to consider SC Linux uh, going through this procedure. And finally, I'm back booting again. But going through this procedure will okay modify the se linux file context for the etsy shadow file okay and if we don't account for that if we leave se linux in enforcing mode then that's going to cause us <laughs> grief and we're going to have to try again but you'll see here that took a lot longer to do the auto relabel option okay you know and time can be uh important but the fact that you're done when you get back and logging in means that i said i think you're less prone to 
uh, human error. Obviously, the human error would be you forgetting to restore the context to your shadow file, <laughs> and then finding out later uh, that you that you didn't in fact forget that. So didn't want that to take too long, but it does take a little while to do those demos. Hope you enjoyed the uh, tip of the week, and we'll see you again next week.